Hey guys, Sean from Plastic Star Wars and welcome back to part 3 of my HasLab Razor Crest mod. Now in this video, I'll basically be sharing how I enhance some of the paintwork as well as weather the entire toy so that it looks slightly more realistic. At the same time, I've also improved on some of the lighting mods I did previously. Now the first thing that I did was to use alcohol swaps to remove the previously applied wash um, from the factory. Next I dismantled the main cannons and painted the grey part um, to make it look more metallic by starting out with uh, matte black and then dry brushing it with silver so that it looks gunmetal. And then I did the same thing for the landing skids. Basically just sprayed the whole thing with matte black and then um, followed by silver. And I gave it like a kind of like a rust colored wash. And after the wash has dried, I painted some of the details with chrome paint to bring out some contrast. So as you can tell, I'm basically trying to paint over the bare plastic bits that I find all over the toy. And in most cases, I just use um, silver paint and I dry brush them on to these parts. And after that, I follow up with a black wash to highlight the details. And to finish off, I use a wet application of Tamiya Weathering Master Rust on certain parts so that the weathering feels kind of natural. And next, I moved on to the main engines. Now the same thing here, um, I'm using Tamiya Weathering Master Suit to basically dirty up the engines. And when I was happy with how it looked, I sealed it with a matte clear coat. And once the clear coat has dried, I dry brushed on some silver to highlight the details. At the same time, I also painted the lip of the engines with some chrome to hide the plastic. In this picture, you can see the before and after. It's uh, subtle, but um, the change is noticeable. And then I started to weather the rest of the engine, starting with um, adding some stress look to the metal. And I did this by just using some chrome paint uh, and applied it with a brush. After that, I used the same dependable Tamiya Weathering Master suit and created all the suit marks on the engines. Now once both the engines were done, I then moved on to weathering the fuselage. Now I pretty much used back the same methods as I did with the engines. But on top of that, I also highlighted some panels with chrome paint so that it catches light in a different manner from the rest of the ship. And in doing so, it creates a sort of a texture that isn't very apparent in photographs, but you can definitely see it with the naked eye. Now with the exterior of the ship all weathered and painted, I focused my attention onto the play features, starting with all the uh, hidden details around the ship. Now for these panels, um, I simply sprayed them with a matte coat and then I gave them a, a black wash, followed by an application of Tamiya Weathering Master Rust. I was very happy with the result as it managed to tone down the blue plastic without me having to repaint it. 
I also used Tamiya Weathering Master Sand for all the floorboards as well as highlighted the carbonite blocks with uh, silver paint by dry brushing and for the gun cabinet doors I repainted them in aluminum and gave it a wash so that it feels more metallic now at this stage I'm pretty much done with the painting and weathering but I thought I could still do a little bit more in terms of lighting so I decided to remove the front section of the ship to access the landing lights I did this by unscrewing two screws from beneath and prying the front part out with a flathead screwdriver once I got the panel out, I drilled two holes and I threaded some fiber optics through them. Now I didn't document this part because there was very little space in the cockpit and I couldn't get the camera in. What I did was I bunched up the fiber optics and somehow managed to tap into one of the fairy lights as its light source. Now the other lighting improvement that I made was to get rid of the engine glow effect. To block out the light, I sprayed the insides of the nozzles with matte black followed by chrome paint so that it remains reflective. And with that, my Haslab Razorcrest mod has come to an end. I'm really pleased with how it turned out and Although I know it's still a toy because the proportions aren't quite right, it's still a great looking thing and I had so much fun blurring the lines between a toy and a model. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this and if you did, please do help like and subscribe because it will encourage me to make more videos like this in the future. As always, happy modeling and modding. I'll see you in the next one.